Hey everybody, I've had a few questions about my water system recently and so tonight we're just going to go over the whole thing, how it works, how I remove my nitrate from my groundwater and why I refer to it as a water system rather than a water softener and so on and so forth. So typically a water softener is there to remove calcium and magnesium. This is what we typically call water hardness. It's really just calcium and magnesium. You can have other stuff dissolved into the water and a water softener will remove some of those things depending on what they are. But calcium and magnesium is really what we're looking at removing through a water softener. And the way they do it is with ion exchange resin. So an ion exchange resin is little tiny plastic beads that have a uh, slight negative charge to them and calcium and magnesium have a positive charge to them. So when they're flowing through your water, they tend to want to stick to that media. Now that media already has sodium ions already attached to it. And the sodium ions have a weak charge and a weak attraction to this media. And when the calcium and the magnesium come in, they've got a much stronger attraction. And so they knock sodium ions off and they attach to the resin. So the sodium ions get sent on down the line in your drinking water or down, the, you know, through your softened water and the calcium and the magnesium get held back in this resin and get trapped in this resin. So when it comes time to clean the resin or backwash and recharge the resin and get it all good and sodiumed up again, we backwash the system with brine solution basically it's just salty salty water it's water that's completely saturated with salt you can't hold any more salt in the water and the reason we do this is because as i already mentioned those calcium and magnesium ions they want to hold on to that resin stronger than the sodium ions do so in order to knock all those off and to reset it with the, the sodium ions you need to flood it with sodium ions so we backwash it with this brine solution and there's simply so many sodium ions that they win and they knock all these calcium and magnesium ions off the resin that gets flushed away down the toilet or you know down through the drain or whatever and your resin now has nice fresh sodium ions all over it again and it's ready to have hard water come flowing through it so in my case i don't actually have hard water i have soft water that's fairly acidic and i simply don't want acidic water flowing through my pipes and appliances and so on and so forth so what my system does is neutralize the water and in order to do that it first hardens the water so i actually have soft acidic water coming in and it goes into a canister that is filled with calcium and magnesium carbonate and what that does is it adds calcium carbonate magnesium carbonate and that carbonate raises my ph up to wherever i set it there's a little valve on the thing that allows me to adjust the amount of water that flows through it and i can adjust my ph to where i want it so once i've got the ph set where i want it i've now added calcium and magnesium to the water in the process of getting those carbonates in my water so that's when it goes into my ion exchange resin and softens the water i'm simply removing the calcium and the magnesium that i added to the water already i'm leaving the carbonates behind and i now have two to four degrees carbonate hardness i've got a relatively stable ph i've got some carbonates in my water and i now have a little bit of sodium ions in my water and we're good to go so i've got good water that's soft it's got a neutral ph it's got a carbonate hardness of anywhere from two to four which is a little on the low side but it's i usually have pretty stable ph so i don't worry too much about that and as far as the nitrate goes my nitrate is removed in the same way the um, calcium and magnesium is except there's a slight difference I don't exactly understand how the nitrate is removed because the nitrate has a negative charge to it and as it goes through the system it still gets removed with an ion exchange resin but the ion exchange resin is specific for nitrate it's not positive to negative charge it doesn't work that way it's got something to do with the chloride in the sodium chloride when you do the backwash or something again i don't know exactly how it works with the nitrate 
but it's the same basic principle. It's an ion exchange resin and the sodium is what gets knocked off and into my water system and the nitrate gets trapped and kept behind the same way the calcium uh, and the magnesium do and it gets rinsed out with the backwash and it, basically the nitrate gets treated the exact same way the water hardness does and gets trapped in this ion exchange resin. So at the end of the day, the water that's coming out of my tap has about 200 parts per million sodium ions in it, which is just nothing. It's just really not much of anything. And in fact, my water has so little of anything in it, having a little bit of sodium ions in there is good. Uh, we'll often salt our aquariums. We put, you know, uh, aquarium salt or table salt, sodium chloride uh, in our aquariums for the health of our fish. And if you put one teaspoon of aquarium salt, sodium chloride, table salt, whatever you want to call it. One teaspoon of that in a gallon of water is like the minimum of salting your aquarium. And almost all fish, I don't, I don't, I don't know of any fish that are so sensitive that a teaspoon of salt in a gallon of water is going to bother them at all. And doing that puts over 1,500 parts per million uh, dissolve solids in the water. So the little 200 parts per million that are being exchanged in my water softening system or whatever is just nothing. That, that That's nothing at all. That's nothing to worry about. There's a lot of people out there that say you can't use softened water in your aquarium. That's not necessarily true, but it might be. Everybody's system is different. If you've got a water softener, you need to know how it works and you need to understand how much hardness is being removed because the more hardness is being removed, the more sodium is being put into your system. Now, personally, I can't imagine there being water so hard that it's putting so much sodium ions in your water that you're gonna have any issues with, you know, the, the sodium being too much sodium in your water or something, but that is something to consider. If you've got extremely hard water, if you've got liquid cement coming out of your tap and you run it through a water softening system, you very well may have a lot of sodium in it. If it's below the taste threshold, if you can't taste, you know, that little salty taste in the sodium, then it's probably not enough sodium that you need to worry about it. And again, I don't, I've never heard of anybody having water that was so hard that they had so much sodium put in back into their system that they were actually able to taste the saltiness in their water. So if that's the case, if you've ever been in that situation or whatever, let me know. I'd be interested to hear your comments down below, but I hope that cleared it up. I don't, Hope I didn't oversimplify it or overcomplicate it or whatever, but any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to get back to you if I can. So thanks for watching that one. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you real soon in the next one.